respectfully dedicated to Her Royal Highness, Princess Juliana of the Netherlands, reads the inscription of our next selection, three 17th century Dutch tunes, arranged by Hans Kindler, conductor and founder of the National Radio Symphony Orchestra. The three pieces in the work are entitled, O Angelichige Tide, Mech Toch Hu Stärk, und Wild Heiden nu Treden, composed by Adrianus Valerius during the latter part of the Eighty Years' War, intended to inspire the Dutch citizenry against the persecution of the French. Directing this piece will be Leonard G. Murphy of Balakinwood Middle School.
Our next selection will be an arrangement of Ebony and Ivory, the popular song of Paul McCartney and Stevie Wonder. This song makes an analogy between the black and white keys of a keyboard and racial harmony. The director of this piece will be Mary Ellen DeLise of Arcola Middle School. Our next piece is written in the Western idiom entitled Hullabaloo, arranged by Hyman. 
This piece will be directed by Carmela Quarry of Colonial Middle School.
its intermission at the festival concert of the Schuylkill Valley Orchestra. In a moment, Christopher Andrews will have a special guest to introduce. But first, this brief pause. We're back at Upper Marion Area High School where it's intermission at the festival concert of the Schuylkill Valley Orchestra. Now with a member of the music faculty at Upper Marion Area Middle School, a teacher who has a special role in this year's concert, here once again is Christopher Andrews. We're here now with Mrs. Jane Wright, acting director and host of this year's festival. Mrs. Wright, I'd like to compliment you on how well the orchestra sounds so far. It's really quite a pleasant surprise to hear such beautiful music coming out of the instruments of 12, 13, and 14-year-old musicians. Perhaps some of our viewers would like to know how it is that students are selected to participate in this program. Thanks, Chris. I'd like, I wish they were all my students and I could take credit for all of them. There are 14 schools, 13 this year, that are participating in this festival. And the students are selected by recommendation from the directors that are participating. We meet together uh, in October, and we bring a list of students that we feel qualify, and we try to match that with the instrumentation needed, ninth grade students and eighth grade students having priority. So there's really kind of a pecking order modified by musicianship in choosing who gets to play in the orchestra. Right. After that, after we have recommended the uh, student personnel, on the Saturday before we begin the rehearsals, we do have auditions only for the strings, and at that time they are placed then in a seating arrangement. And I might add that the auditions are based on their ability to play the music that we will be playing in the festival. So for the string sections, then this is a chance to get the feel of what an audition is like that they might be participating in high school with the regional and local right. orchestras. Exactly. So it's really a very good experience in that respect for them. Yes, because that, that is a part of playing in an, in an orchestra and in a band for the rest of their lives if they choose to be in, in the field of, of instrumental music. So it's a good place to start. Now, I know that a lot of orchestra conductors like to feel that they're at home in their particular surroundings. Now, here we have, say, 13, 11 directors coming in, asked to conduct on a strange stage in strange pro surroundings. Do you feel that this affects the program in any way? I think it, it affects the program very favorably. I think the students uh, have an opportunity to meet and to learn uh, different styles uh, of personality and of interpretations of music. And uh, I feel that the, the type of teacher that is in our instrumental music program are very flexible and adaptable people. So I feel that it, it is no problem to them. And we've been doing the festival together for many years, and I feel that they all work very well together. So this is another good benefit to the students, then, that uh, they get to work under a variety of conductors. I must say that I've worked under a lot of conductors in my performing days, and it's really quite a shock when you expect a certain cue or a certain movement from a conductor, and you don't get it because it's a different conductor. Right, and that is, that is a part of interpretation. And, and music is all very spontaneous, and the conductor is the final interpreter, and the musicians have to, to learn to be responsive to that. So it is a, it's a very educational part of participating in the large group of orchestra or the large group of a band. We also have, by the way, a Schuylkill Valley Band that will be performing in March at the Eisenhower Middle School. I think it's March 25th, so that they do do this for band orchestra and for jazz, for jazz band. I think you've participated in all three, haven't well, you? Oh, yes, I have, playing various instruments at various times. Uh, are there any special logistical problems when you have people coming from a long way to come to this orchestra? If you run into a problem, you know, how, how can you work it out? Well, I, I really didn't run into any problems over this, and I think it's mainly because uh, it's been so successfully run in the past that each conductor has 
guidelines that we pass down. And um, there is so much help, and I feel between the conductors that if there is a problem, you just direct the problem to that conductor or the director in that school and that it's taken care of. So I really felt my, my job was very, very easy once all the preliminaries were taken care of, that the last minute details were, were really handled by, by each director, and they all do attend all the rehearsals and, that we had had, and there was three totaled. Well, I think it's very clear from the quality of the program so far that it, the organization was very well handled. Uh, kind of as a subjective view, how would you feel that the program is going so far, the first half of the program? Or have you been pleased with the quality? Really good, yeah. I feel really good. And it's nice to see it all come together after, after you do so much work in organization. It's really one of the nicer things that I think that I've done in, in the field of music education. really enjoyed it. In our conversation, we've already touched upon some of the benefits to the students. Perhaps as, let's take a step back and view the whole picture. Just what exactly does it do for a student to be able to participate in a program? What are its benefits? Why should it be continued? Just how good is the program? Well, I feel that probably the feelings of accomplishment are, are the greatest benefits. And the feelings of accomplishment that you get from achieving something that you've really put a lot of time and, and effort into. Uh, I feel that there's a, a sharing through music with people of like interests. And there's many educational benefits that uh, we don't always achieve just in the classroom. And I hope that we can continue this, this sort of thing, this type of thing. It gives the, the child that has um, perhaps more ability and opportunity to play with people with, with more ability. And it brings them together. And I think they can grasp a sense of perspective on where they are and their ability when they move beyond their own school districts. So I think that the benefits are very numerous, uh, musical and social. I guess the uh, instrumentalists get to make some new friends here that they might be seeing later on in their years as a musician. Yeah, and they do, and they do pop up. I, I know that myself that over, over the years you, you keep running into music people that, that you've known because they always seem to, to migrate into the same general interests and areas. So I'm sure they will have made some lasting friendships and they, I'm hoping so that they can continue. So it seems that uh, it's really quite a lot of benefits to all concerned that there's participation in this festival. Uh, well, I think the program's getting ready to start now, so I'd like to thank you for being with us, and we'll now be returning to you to the program. Thank you, Chris. Thank you, Mrs. Wright and Mr. Andrews. The audience here at this festival concert of the Schuylkill Valley Area Orchestra has returned to the auditorium now, having showed their real appreciation during the first part of the evening for the young musicians who have been performing. And the musicians themselves are back on the stage, preparing for the second part of this evening's program, which, like the first, will feature a variety of music. And as we await the appearance of the next conductor, here again is your host, Christopher Andrews. Our next selection will be one of the Slavonic dances by Antonin Dvorak. The composer was probably influenced by the popularity of Brahms' Hungarian dances. However, unlike the Hungarian dances, these dances were written merely to preserve the flavor of Slavonic culture, rather than using authentic folk tunes. The piece will be directed by Joseph Carmichael of Welsh Valley Middle School. <laughs> 